Hey all, so I have a class in remote sensing, so I wanted to do a video on all the lectures that we'll be doing this year. So, on remote sensing, this is the science of how light, electromagnetic radiation interacts with what's in the atmosphere and what's on the surface of the earth, i.e. water, sand, snow or grass, and how to turn this into useful maps. We will look at high resolution images, see people, trees, and whole of our own area that we will be capturing with global data sets. Most of the course we will be then turning to, into maps into useful information, like finding all the banana trees or changes in land cover. Finally, we'll be looking how to turn these maps into web maps for government sources and other things that people can use them from. Note that some changes from the past is now that satellites have changed and you can also expect like rockets changing from fuel into like battery power and stuff. So there are a few types of orbits from these satellites. You have low, which is predominantly private use, say science, and then you also have medium, which is for long-term research, and then you also have high, which is for military usage and also meteorology. In this image, these are all our satellites, not including space junk. So in this video, introduction, people, who do remote sensing at the remote sensing research center do? They identify how light interacts in different environments. Field work is important, we must identify water depth, tree height, water content and other things. We also have to do image collection through drones and satellites. Importantly this is done over time because if you don't get a range of shots you won't get the full picture. We also have image to information using equations from a picture to graph or heat map. Use of multiple software packages is also what this company will do. So they may use for example Envy which is image pre-processing system. We also use ArcGIS QG or QGIS for g the general mapping and then we might use Python to automate this process to speed it all the way up and then we can use GitHub to share share files and share images and stuff like that. And then finally we might do like an impacts report or something of the like. And it's also useful to collaborate with government and other private sector corporations and such to the more easier that the information is to collect and to distribute, the easier everything will be. And it's important to recognize that maps can be lied with. And the types of lying that you can see are right here. For example, they may be data collection methods, timing of collection, when collection started or finished. For example, um, uh, did we do it too late because there may be an anomaly, which is the next point. There may be an anomaly, for example, we may be in a drought, and if you do a study at the beginning of the drought or at the end of the drought, that will change statistics than if the drought never occurred in the first place. There may also be an area of collection problem. Uh, for example, if we're zoomed in too far, we won't be getting the broader picture of what's happening. And also, the method of collection is also another problem. So what is Earth observation and why do we use it? Earth observation is the science and art of obtaining information about an object, area or phenomenon through the analysis of data collected by a device that is not in contact with what is being measured. So the measuring device is not directly touching the measured object. So we also have direct measurement which would be such as identifying how much sediment is in the Great Barrier Reef after a cyclone. And we would do that through a few steps which would be uh, looking at a coastal river and collecting samples in the ocean and then drawing closer and closer to the river mouth to determine how much sediment, say um, grams or per cubic meter, is in the water. So you start at one point and you gradually move towards the, to the river system. Another method would be satellite images once or twice a day and seeing how brown the sediment plume is in the water itself. Unlike in the past with Earth observation where things were purchased from a few distributors, it's now usually fairly accepta acceptable, accessible, I mean, from cloud operating servers which can then be edited by people such as through ArcGIS Online. And Esri has multiple courses on how to do this. And then it can be seen by mobile users who may also do some final editing to see exactly what they want. This is typically for companies or it may also be for farmers or something. Earth observation sciences is the same as remote sensing of the environment. And so why do we need an understanding of remote sensing? Well, we need it to decide the accuracy of collected data. And with it, we can, for example, look at the healthiness of crops. If you look at this image here, 
Uh, this is done online on a, a page, which I'll put in the description, I can't remember it right now. But you can change it into infrared, and looking at the, the deeper, deeper reds, those are the ones that represent crops that are healthy. So whites represent dead crops, or areas that don't have crops. So what are some example applications of remote sensing? Well, you may have things like flooding, for example, by which the process will be something along the lines of, say, LiDAR, which is a plane swoops over, it shoots down a light which is beamed back up, and then you see the, uh, you see the RGB values or something which you'll make use of, which then goes on to a digital elevation, which may go through some model and then forecasted, or it may go through a GIS first, then through a map surfer, which people can then interact with. And so there are a few types of LiDAR radar elevation data sets, and these are the digital surface canopy model, which is the height of features above ground, the digital elevation model, which is the height of the ground, and the digital terrain model, which is the height of all features. And people may also add their own observation of flooding via mobile. And to how to do this, there are multiple um, Esri MOOC courses, which show you how to do this general thing. This is one of them, which is uh, Wales, I believe, and Cuba, or South America somewhere. And so next up, what's the difference between direct and remote sensing? Well, predominantly they are uh, time measurements, the area covered, the access to area, the disturbance levels, and the cost effectiveness. And so disturbance levels that may be um, direct or remote, well, if you're directly disturbing something, then you're disturbing it. You may be changing the, the data, you may be altering the data in some way. Whereas remote sensing may not capture as much, but the data won't be disturbed. So it's a bit of a whichever you choose. And so the remote sensing process. Remote sensing typically uh, is an over time analysis. Originally this was balloons which moved onto planes and the space program, then Landsat, then commercial satellites, and then back to space station, and now you've got new modern smaller satellites that we do today. And so the remote sensing process as an example, here is a mango tree. This tree is made up of multiple colors or pixels. Each pixel has a certain RGB value. And so RGB is essentially three layers of red, green, and blue. However, in, in order they appear blue, green, red. And when you line up one row of cells through these three layers, you get the um, spectral signature. And at the top right of this image is the total uh, mango farm that we may be looking at. So the entire center area, that's the mango farm, and then on the sides, they would be patchy trees of openness and closeness. Uh, the healthiness it would be dependent on the red, I would think. And moving on to electromagnetic radiation, or EMR. Uh, this is any object with a temperature of greater than zero Kelvin which will emit in the EMR, in EMR. And sunlight and thermal is also a form of EMR. EMR and the Earth's environments. Types of interactions include reflection or scattering, absor absorption, and transmission. Types of interactions observed in images are controlled by physical, chemical, and biological characteristics of objects. And there are four types of sensor resolution. These are the spatial, the pixel size and image extent, or the size of an area covered. So spatial is just area. Spectral, which is the type of light, or the EMR measured. And the visible light versus the versus thermal infrared. So it may just be um, the pixel color, more or less. So uh, either of the RGB values, spectral. And then you have radiometric, which is the level of detail and uh, brightness differences able to be detected. So just think of radiometric as the accuracy of when you zoom in or zoom out, is it fuzzy or fuzzy, or is it not fuzzy? And then you also have temporal, which is the time and frequency of image acquisition. Remember when I said before that if you take it during an anomaly, you're gonna get screwed up results. That's what that is. Oh, and it may also be um, how long you do the study for. So if you do it over a year, you're gonna get different results than if you do it over 24 hours or something. And then you have remote sensing data characteristics, which is an alterable map that has a feature of zooming in which decreases pixel size. And yeah, so that is the full thing. 
So as an overview of what we will be doing in this course, that's pretty much how to identify the right data set, pixel size, and bands through appropriately sensed data and applying relevant image processing interpretation analysis techniques to detect and measure the composition of the environment and its biophysical properties to solve uh, a problem that which we will be given later. And on to our last slide. Uh, if you want to do all this yourself, you can pretty much just do it through first learning Python and I would suggest looking up Derek Bernard's on YouTube, he's really great for learning Python. He also teaches every programming language, the basics of it anyway. So he does SQL, Python, C++, whatever you want to know. But uh, for this course, you'll probably only know, probably only need to know Python. And then if you want to start with that, you can do, um, you might want to start with ArcPy and ArcGIS, which is, ArcPy is essentially the basic module or library which has all the Python uh, tools that you can use to interact with ArcGIS programs. And then you might want to move on to mastering geospatial analysis with Python. Uh, that's more of the heavy, du heavy duty stuff. Uh, then you might want to move on to maybe the Python data analysis cookbook or you might want to do that earlier maybe which is essentially just it goes through the steps of uh, doing data analysis, what you should do with Python. And then you might want to move on to the Python machine learning uh, book, which is really, really good. It will tell you, uh, it, it will show you how to automate processes to get a program to do things for you. Like, it'll show you statistics, and then it'll show you how to put those statistics into a good format by breaking them up into different groups, different logical groups. So if you have, um, say if you have five apples, it might, it will show you how to break them into green and red apples. And it'll show you how to make a program which will do that for you automatically. So all you have to do is just run it and it'll automatically start breaking up data for you, which is really, really good. And it'll show you a number of different ways of doing this and they all have their own uh, different, different uh, uses depending on the data that you're looking at. So some data may not be um, normally distributed or something. And then you also have SurveyMonkey, which is essentially just a online website which allows people to upload data to a questionnaire or something that you might want to make, which is really easy. So it's just, uh, I want to see how many people like fries or chips or something. And then people can just submit an answer to the SurveyMonkey, which is your survey that you made, the questions that you wanted. And you can get your answers and your data which relates back to the Python machine learning book with that data, with that data that you just collected, you can then show what people do and don't like. And then if you also want to make like an app out of this, which would be the final, very last step, you can then go into Esri courses. Um, they're, they're called MOOCs. They're just they're short online courses. They have like exams and stuff. But if you fail, you can just redo them a million times. Doesn't matter. And the one I did was called Do It Yourself Geo Apps, which is essentially just it makes an app of whatever uh, map or program, whatever you want to show or make or do. Uh, it's really short, it's really easy. It doesn't go through a lot, I'll be honest. Uh, if you really want to make like a like an actual app or something, um, Mastering Geospatial Analysis with Python, that book will go through that. So yeah, good luck with that guys. And I'll be doing my next tutorial on remote sensing pretty soon. But if you want to do all this yourself, look at these books and all that, uh, which does all the actual handling, all the practical work. And I'm just going through remote sensing as more theory. But I'll also be doing actual practical work with remote sensing as well, which is how to collect data based on using light and pixels. That's what I'll be going through in this course. So good luck, guys.